Can't go where you can't see. The one you're sitting next to said, did you know you can't go where you can't see? Mm. A whole lot of folks trying to go places that they can't even see. All right. Put your hands like this and look at this and say, the space inside this circle represent my realm of knowledge. All that I think I know about whatever I think I know is represented inside this circle. And you'll be amazed that people only stay in this circle when there could be a whole plethora of information. So let's continue. Say, I must forever keep in mind that there is more to learn and know than what is within the circumference of my awareness. Now tell somebody you don't know it all. So remember our circle of awareness has to be expanded. It has to be expanded. What we're trying to do in the city of Battle Creek, if we don't change our awareness, we'll just end up becoming another carbon copy of a church. And that's not what we want. There's no reason to start a new ministry if all we're going to do is be a carbon copy. Okay? Okay? So we have to have the awareness has to be expanded, and it must be the most high God who does it, not man. Can't be Tino. Can't be Mom. Can't be Doug. Can't be Chris. It's important that we know this. So let's talk about this. We are programmed to reject anyone or anything outside of our circle of awareness. And that's why there's so much community division. Because we will reject if it doesn't make sense in our circle. And you know what? It could be truth. But because this is something you haven't heard, I ain't trying to hear it. And guess what? We stopped growing. God is too big of a God for us to be so small. <clears throat> One of the greatest joy as a teacher and as a spiritual leader is to have a congregation who is excited. That's what I want from you. Motivated and inspired as a result of learning and growing in the truth. When I was a young fella, uh, it's three of us, Hugh, myself, and Duan. Uh, we, st- we shared a, a room together, and at one time we had a bunk bed. And for some reason, there would be times when we may watch a scary movie. And one of us, whoever we recognized was that scared the fastest, when the lights were turned out, one of us started going, mm-hmm. you know. From, from these horror movies. And um, some of us have watched some of these kind of movies. And these movies have frightened you. And you start having what you call an imagination. And I remember in our bunk bed or a bed, we had a football helmet on the bunk bed. And because of my imagination was going wild, you know, just my imagination, you're running away with me. At night, that, that helmet looked like it was a monster. And I would wake up thinking the monster is coming after me. Okay, I'm trying to give you an understanding. The imagination would kick in. And it wasn't long before I was sure that whatever the movie was, Whatever I saw became alive. And this is why I never allowed my children growing up 
to watch those kind of shows. Now, I'm not here to tell you what you can watch, what you can't watch, but be careful what can impact your imagination. Because what happens is, once that imagination kick in, it can eventually control you. And so what happened was, you know, you get people that go to theaters. They go to theaters just to get scared. I don't know if that was a ploy back in the day. I remember when I was a young fella, before I had my beautiful wife, I would go to the hunter house just to go so the little girl could start screaming so I could hold her. <laughs> that was a strategy of mine. We would go to the hunter house. And we'd get in line, and I, I wanted it to be scary. So, yeah! Whatever the strategy was, but we were really tormenting ourselves. We were tormenting ourselves. But now back to the imagination. Once your imagination is filled with these pictures or with other things, that's what the devil does. The devil is the enemy. He takes your soul. Destruction follows. And before you know it, you're frozen at fear. After all Hollywood, after all the money's been made, whether comical or whatever, the goal is for Satan to make you frozen in fear. What is frozen? You're, you're, you're standing still. You're not moving. Fear causes you not to do when you're supposed to do. Stagnation, being stagnated is not the will of God. There must constantly be movement. And fear causes some people to shut down. I shared with you a while back what sickness and disease, disease is like dis-ease. When there's a dis-ease moment in your life, and, and doctor may not know this, and he probably does know this since he's no doubt Christian and doctor, sometimes a medical doctor can't diagnose what's wrong because according to all the church they're fine but they say they're sick when there's a dis-ease which is where disease came from somewhere you were frozen in fear and you stop going forward because of fear what I want you to see in this scripture that we're going to talk about is that this generally happens because of this. And let's look at this scripture. And I want you all to see this because according to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible talks about that there's vain, there's empty, futile, sometimes evil imaginations that we are to cast down. There are some imaginations that you're going through that we're supposed to cast them down. There's some stuff that's in your head. Rather, it was that football that I thought was helmet that I thought was a monster. I had to cast it down. Let's look at the Bible. Let's read together. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. In anything that caused you to question God. Somebody said, cast it down. Wow, let's read uh, the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So our imagination is the part of our mind where we can visualize some things. Understand this now. With your imagination that God gave you, you have the ability to visualize that is not manifest in the physical world around us. Let me say that again. Your imagination, you have the power to visualize things that's not in reality. Let me say that one more time in layman terms. You saying some stuff that happened that ain't never happened. Ah, I swear up and down. You got nine folks that ain't happened. That ain't what it was. Your imagination, you have the ability to see things 
And can you imagine if what you see is wrong, how it can keep you in bondage? We can imagine something based on previous experience. See? Previous experience. You had a bad experience with the preacher that had a black robe on. I walk in with a black robe on. Oh, God. Lord Jesus. Same guy. Don't even know me. But if that's your imagination, you're going to say, whatever. It's amazing how people can have imaginations in their heads and in reality it's not there. But the truth is, if you think it's there, it's your reality. And if it's not the will of God, it could control you. When you imagine things, you can see things, but no one else see it. Our imagination can also be a vision or revelation from God. And that's the good thing. If our minds, here we go, y'all. If our minds are renewed, everybody say renewed. With his word. Okay, there you go. With his word, with his word. And now we're following him, then the Holy Spirit can communicate with us through our imagination. That's how I get sermons. I don't go on the internet and find a sermon. I don't click on T.D. Jakes. I promise I I have yet to hear one of his total sermons. I really say, God, give me the hearts of the people. Give me what folks need to know. Allow me to remain current. Let me keep my personality, and here I go. And that's how you're supposed to do Don't let no one change who you are. Let God use you the way you are because you're an individual. <laughs> uh, and what makes you special is because you're different. You, can, you, you, you get some, all, all the sons and, and, and spiritual sons in the church, there's going to be some patterns that's going to become like me because you're going to be up under me, but you're still going to be your own person. I had a lot of similarity from my spiritual father, but I was still my own person. And nothing wrong with that because that's natural. But never forget who you really are because that's what makes you unique. Glory to God. And that's why you have to educate people when they come to this church, say, pastor, nephew, uncle, cousin, how you call me, say, he's different, but he's good people. Because if you don't know me, I can make you feel kind of uncomfortable sometimes. But that's never my intentions. And that's where relationship is built in. See, the, the world believes that a person's imagination is the source of their individual creativity. One good thing that Dr. Bison said to me earlier, and this is the first time I ever met him, he said, he really, he said, I know this kind of sound weird, but really, I felt called into, into politics. I said, no, that's not weird. I believe that. And I do believe that. I do believe that God called people to do certain things. God called Moses. God called Elijah. And so I believe that, and I received that. And that's very important that people understand that what you do is because God has called you to do. What makes me able to drive 2,000, 3,000 miles in a day, be up 24 hours, is because I'm called and God gives me supernatural strength to do what I have to do and he'll do it for you too. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Trouble don't last always. He is our source. I heard Daquan say that while he's playing. He is our source. He's our source of life and all knowledge. Therefore, we have no original thought. And I know there's a lot of folks that want to be God, but they, they can be a little G-O-D, but the bottom line is we don't have no original thoughts. There's nothing new under the sun. All you can do is make what God already created. So that's why we sound original because everybody else copied from everybody else, but God got a word just for you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, as we grow and begin to have workshops, I'll be dealing with the men about how God can talk to you, about how you run your household, not dictating, not telling the wife. Because let me tell you something about a wife. A wife don't mind being a helpmeet when she know you really leading the team. She only trying to run things because she know you're going to quit when the first trouble comes. So we got to try to raise and teach and teach. And, but the bottom line, the real man is going to hear the voice of God. In other so we receive information and revelation from the Holy Spirit and God's word. To receive it from the enemy. The enemy can give you some stuff in your head that's not really going on. And now your imagination has gone wild. That's why you have to renew your mind. I'm, the reason why I get worried when I don't see you two weeks in a row, because I know somebody been in your head. Hello, somebody. I'm not calling you because I'm bugging you. I'm not calling you because I'm trying to control your life. If I don't see you for two or three weeks, I'm worried because I realize if you're not hearing a word from me, then you're hearing a word from somebody because trust me, something's going in your head. That's why once in a while you got to make yourself come to the house of the Lord. Whether you feel like it or not, I got to get a word so I can have a little more strength to deal with all this drama. Because trust me, drama's going to remain outside. After service is over, you're going to say, oh, we had a good time. Man, cuz, uncle, nephew, bishop, he preached. Woo, and devil's going to say, ah, boom. But then you're going to have a word to fight back. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, understand the vision. We make decisions based upon spiritual re uh, relationships. You make decisions based upon spiritual relationships with God or carnal, natural connection, the enemy. But you will make decisions. Did you hear me? You're going to make decisions. Go to work. New job, new relationship, purchase a car, purchase a home, a family, whatever, whatever. You're making the decision, and your decision is based upon spiritual or carnal, period. There's no other way around it. You made a conscious decision to come to church today. Your natural body had many reasons to say, I can't make it. But we want to get to a point where you just start coming because you understand the devil don't want you here because he's afraid of you. Because if you ever become what God has called you to be, you're going to be somebody powerful. Trust me, every last one of y'all are special. Every last one of y'all are unique. Every last one of y'all are dynamic people. You are no accident. You are no mistake. You have something to do for the kingdom of God. Why don't you give yourself a praise because you're alive? Amen, somebody. So what you mean? Praise yourself because God loves you that much. If you don't love yourself, how can you help somebody else? I want to teach you to love yourself. Jesus said in the Bible, do unto others as you have them do unto you. And then he said, love people as you love yourself. The reason why folks can't love people because they don't love themselves. And the reason why you can't love yourself is because you can't let go of your past. But the Bible says, forget those things which are behind. Only time we talk about yesterday is to help somebody else, but it's never to stay there. Come on, somebody. You get up and you go forward. Forget those things which are behind. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. I'm not judging you with your past. I don't care because we all got a past. But I'm looking at you right now. And when someone tried to bring it up, I said, how dare you bring up something that God forgot about? Do I have a witness in here? Do you know God has forgot about your past? Your past has been placed in the sea of forgetfulness. How dare you bring up yesterday when God forgot about it today? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. That's your story. You got to move forward. 
So the fact that we have no original thought will offend the pride of people who don't know the Lord because they like to believe their ideas are their own. Most of them have no idea there is a devil and demons out there feeding thoughts, feeding their anger, feeding images. They program, program your mind. Oh, that's why we're here today. So we make decisions based upon our, you see him flipping the coin? You, you don't have that kind of time to make the wrong choice. You got some serious stuff you got to do, and you can't just go by your emotions. That's why you have parents, and that's why you have spiritual leaders. I see stuff about you that you can't see. God just wants you to trust him because he know your future better than you know your own future. God has a plan. There's a plan for everything. And so this ministry want to help you. And you say, well, Bishop, I kind of messed up. I went so far. It's okay. The fact that you're still alive, God wants you to have a comeback. Tell your neighbor a comeback. See, oh, see, if God didn't want you to survive, you would have died in all the mess you were in. Some of y'all been through some mess, and guess what? You're alive because God wants you to have a testimony about a comeback. Yes, indeed. No, I didn't do everything the right way, but I got a comeback. I didn't do all the right things, but thank God for a comeback. Ladies and gentlemen, catch this part here because this part is pretty important. So we got Colossians. This is the Bible verse that says, for, all, for by him were all things created. See? All things that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. So everything was created by God. Whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. That's powerful. Because you may not know this, but God created you for him. You are to bring him glory. And I promise you, if you take care of God, he's going to take care of you. See, see think, watch this concept. I'm, I'm about finished. Think about this. Most of us in here are concerned about our domestic affairs. How I'm going to eat. How I'm going to pay my bills. How I'm going to get this. But the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added. In other words, if you take care of God's stuff by allowing God to have you. Oh, man. Now, God is getting you stuff because you earned it. You've been faithful over few things. You've been faithful over small stuff. You praise him when nobody else will praise him. You press your way in the house of God when only five, six folks showed up. God will not forget that. So when he's ready to pour out his blessings, he's going to remember you first. But then don't get mad when your brother get it because they needed it. Come on, somebody. Never get angry when God blessed the sinner man because the same God that blessed the sinner man will bless you double fold. Never be a hater. I, never want, I don't want this church to ever be a hater. Bless people. When God bless folks, be happy because everything came from God. But when you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then stuff going to start happening. He's going to start opening doors in your life. I believe that. I believe that in, in politics. I really believe that. I believe that with all my heart. If you seek the mind of God, God will make things happen. God can turn things around. I'm telling you how it works. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. John may say, well, um, I, I cut my hours because I, I came to church. God know that. 
And God going to have a way of getting that supervisor to give him a raise or mess around and make him the owner over the supervisor. See, God has a way. Or God can take your dollar and turn your dollar into $10. You ain't hearing what I'm trying to tell you. You got to start seeing things from a spiritual perspective. Quit living your life based upon with your own eyes. See God from a big God. I can never do what I do with what I have. Trust me. What I have is just enough to do what I'm doing. But this extra stuff I'm doing is because God is making a way out of no way. So, and he is before all things and by him all things consist. The devil has no original thoughts. I want you to know that. You're not a robot. Somebody said, well, Bishop, you, you got me thinking I'm a robot. And this is the point I want to hit before we go home. Okay, you, you got me thinking I've been programmed. If I have no thoughts, then I'm a robot. Check this out. You get this good if you could. If I have no thoughts, and God is telling me everything, and he knows everything going to happen before I do it, then why do anything? Because I'm just a robot. The fact that we have no original thought offends prideful people who don't know the Lord because they like to believe their ideas are their own. Most of them, as I stated, have no idea there is a devil and demons out there that are feeding them thoughts and images, I've said that, programming their minds and influencing them to do what they want them to do. But everything we think causes our imaginations to be filled with ideas. Now, get this in your spirit. Everything we think causes our imaginations to be filled with ideas and mental images that were put there by either the Holy Spirit or the enemy. So, if you are in front of an evil TV show, you'll get those imaginations. See, the, the church back in the day used to say, don't do stuff, but they never explained why. And now you're grown, so you ain't going to tell them what to do. They were really trying to tell you, if you keep feeding yourself with garbage, garbage going to come out. Somebody said, well, why do you think nobody marrying all that kind of stuff. Say, well, well, no, nobody say it. Everybody said it. No, that ain't the case. Think about the last 20 years, 30 years. Name a TV show after I Love Lucy where they were married. One of the most popular shows was Martin. Martin and Gina never got married until the end of the movie. Right? Y'all with me? Can I get an Amen. Okay, look at what we're watching. Think about the stuff we're watching every day. It becomes a norm. It's not a problem. I'm not here to judge or condemn. I'm telling you, if you watch something all the time, it becomes a norm. And if no one ever talk about it, it's no big deal. The violence, the murder. The, the domestic, of all that stuff. Now everybody's watching, you know, big time, uh, 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 what's it called? Um, Empire. So all the men that want to be like lions, you love that show. You walk around thinking you lying. But see, see, we watch these shows, and before you know it, I know because back in the day, I had a real problem with The Godfather. I watched that so, I watched it so much, there were times when I thought I was Corleone. <laughs> Corleone, don't betray your family. See, if, but the Bible said, if you can do that, why don't you get into this word and start getting what God wants out of your life? Everything we think caused our imagination to be filled with ideas and mental images that were put there by either the Holy Spirit or the enemy. So that's why we have that scripture in Colossians. The devil has no thoughts. So you're saying, Pastor, I'm a robot. You are programmable 
but you make your own decisions. Somebody said, I'm programmable, but I make my own decisions. Y'all got that? You can be influenced on either side. That's what that means by programmable. In other words, you're going to respond, but you make your own choice. Mm. Without a vision, my people perish. You play something softly, we're going to go on this thought. Where there is no vision, people perish. If you ever look at the scripture together, vision and happy comes together. When you follow his vision, you will be happy. You catch that? When you follow his vision, you will be happy. And I'll say this to anyone else right now. If you follow the vision, I promise you, your life will be happy. Say, well, Bishop, how do I know the vision is? You're doing the right thing right now. You're hearing the word of God. And the more you hear, you're going to go home in the private home. You're going to think about stuff I heard, stuff, things you've said, I said. And you're going to start putting yourself together. And before you know it, you're going to start having joy unspeakable. I may be tired of my body, but I'm happy. Because that's natural to be tired of all that I'm doing. But I'm happy. I'm happy in my assignment. Well, well, your church is real small. I know, but I'm happy in my assignment. It won't remain small. Well, you don't have a, your own building yet. Well, you know what? But I'm happy because that's going to come. When you're in your assignment, you can even deal with not having too much in your pocket. The problem is you start looking at everybody else and get off track. We used to call it the Joneses. And I ain't talking about Chris and Russell, or Chris and DJ Jones, but the Joneses, we use that name to say, everybody trying to copy the Joneses. No, 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 no. Don't copy anybody. Stay in your own realm so God can bless you. They're happy because they abide in God's word. I've shared this with my daughter and my son, and I want you, to, if you don't get nothing else, get this. Shadrach, Meshach, you heard their story. They were supposed to burn in a furnace fire. Those who keep the laws are happy. But how many of y'all just sitting in front of the television and letting the television control your thoughts? How is that possible? Let me tell you why. Everybody say television is something what? Television is telling somebody else's vision. Every time you watch television, somebody's telling you their vision. Not your vision, somebody else's vision. I want y'all to catch this now because we're going to go home. My, again, give you some thoughts to eat. Go home with. One more time. Read this. Say, television is something... Telling. That's the first part. Every time you turn on TV, they're what? Telling. So when a young man turn on television and see a basketball game and they go to your bedroom, mom, daddy, cousin, what would they tell you they want to be? Basketball player. And then right after basketball is over, they just watch boxing. Just got done watching basketball. And they come in with some shorts and say they want to be a what? And y'all know because y'all grown. Boy, go to bed. Barack gave his speech. First term, then second term. A lot of folks say, I want to be the what? A president. Television. So here we go. Read this. You are receiving a vision for your life, no matter what, no matter what. So they're thrown in the fire, the furnace fire, but because they were not listening to somebody else's vision, God brought them out. Are y'all with me? Let's give God a praise.